Emma is John Hammer is going to just share uh, testimony, and then myself and Michael Moore will be uh, sharing. Oh, we we also have another testimony coming up from Vince Thomas. But uh, John, go ahead. Hey, good morning, everybody. It's uh, sunny and 7 a.m. in Seattle <laughs> uh, today, and uh, I'm just really blessed and privileged to get to know many of you, uh, even from the West Coast, and uh, so thankful for Bishop Joe's influence in my life. He just spent some time with us at a conference uh, this last week, and we had a really powerful time uh, together, and so it was good to get some time with him in the flesh, um, but uh, it's meant a lot to me to be a part of CCC, and to get on the, the table calls and to get to know some of you through uh, some of the uh, bridge summits uh, that we used to have in person and that we've done online the last couple of years. Uh, it's been a real blessing for me because I was having a hard time finding like-minded leaders uh, because it feels to me like a lot of, you know, leaders get taken out and young leaders get taken out a lot. Um, and so when I met Bishop Joe, it was just such a huge godsend to me because um, I, I felt like I finally met a leader. Um, I mean, I, my dad is an amazing man of God. And so he's always my number one spiritual father too. Uh, but I was looking for other leaders that really loved the movement of the Holy Spirit, but that had a high Christology and a high view of the gospel and were missional in their thinking. And I found that um, a lot of leaders were a lot of people in the, charismatic Pentecostal movement, which I'm proudly a part of, uh, were just weren't necessarily going through the scriptures as much or, um, you know, helping develop a culture in churches that was actually reaching their cities and making disciples and building family and marriage. And we're kind of going after peripheral things or cultural things and things that could get crowds, but weren't really making disciples. And so when I met Bishop Joe, it was just like, such a such a huge blessing to me because I felt like man this is the this is the kind of person that I want to run with and uh, he understood I felt like he understood my generation probably better than anybody that I had met that was in their 60s I mean I, oh he's only in his 50s isn't he or is it, is it still late 40s Joe I don't remember but anyway Today, today's my birthday <laughs> I turned uh, 45 okay that's right 45 yeah. <laughs> my bad but uh it just felt that you really understood the generations and uh, how to reach younger leaders um, uh, and without compromising the ancient paths and without compromising, you know, biblical values, and biblical worldview. Uh, so I've been tremendously strengthened by a lot of the topics and just the conversation and just to know that there's other leaders that are um, going after similar things uh, for the kingdom of God uh, in this generation. And so um, I, I've, I've received so much uh, from from everybody that's involved, and it's been it's been a help through a really crazy couple of years that we've all experienced um, un unprecedented uh, challenges as leaders. But God's faithful, and His church is moving on. So, um, anyway, that's what I have to say. Well, well, it's been amazing to have you as a uh, partner in the kingdom and as a young voice in our movement. Um, and you're just doing an outstanding work. We just had a great conference, and he called it The Way, based on the way of Christ and his apostles. Uh, I don't know why I never thought of that before. <laughs> but yeah, they had T-shirts and different emblems signifying the way of Christ. And uh, it was just an awesome, awesome time. They have a great church, and they're impacting their whole region and beyond. So uh Thank you, John, for sharing. It's an honor to have you. Uh, also, uh, we have a very powerful testimony. Details can't be shared to the point of uh, getting in trouble of certain, certain things, but uh, uh, Vince Thomas has um, something I want him to share with us, just to encourage us, especially in this season of challenges. Um, it's really good to hear God coming through for uh, one of our pastors. So Vince, are you there? I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> All right. You're still married? Listen, married, uh, newborn, 
um, getting getting our sleep pattern slowly coming back. Uh, I'm starting to know day from night. Uh, so God is good. <laughs> All right. Praise God. Congratulations again. How old is the baby? He's uh, he's going to be three months uh, next wow. Tuesday. So he is he wow. is growing. Uh, he is definitely our miracle. And uh, we love him to pieces. <laughs> yep. A Asher, right? Yes, Asher. Asher Thomas. What a name. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah so just give us a you know, quick snapshot of what's going on. It's exciting. Absolutely. Um, so really, this story starts last November, last December, we were approached by an organization in our city um, that does a lot with homelessness, uh, uh, rescuing people out of sex trafficking, youth prevention programs, and they were uh, getting new construction. And uh, they do ministry Monday through Saturday, but wanted an anchor ministry that they could partner up with that could be a place where once they get people off the streets and since they are situated in the community, uh, they wanted a place for the people to go. And so we were approached last November and December, um, uh, just to give, for those who don't know, my church is roughly just over four years old and we've been mobile uh, this entire uh, time that, that we've been open. So the prospect of having your first permanent location uh, where you don't have to set up and tear down, uh, was very appealing um roughly it was apples to apples with what we're expending each month to do our mobile church setup uh, but to have a permanent location brand new construction uh with all the bells and whistles was exciting and so uh, that took place november december holidays happen and uh just this morning uh bishop joe i was reminded that we had a u.s cow call uh i believe january 20th I was on a Thursday and I believe Dr. Mike Maiden came and uh, he began prophesying. And so uh, I forwarded the link to my wife and she actually transcribed what he said. And one of the things that Dr. Mike Maiden said was that there would be a sizable um, ministry property that would be turned over to you. And so in my mind, I'm like, well, I know what I got going on in the background um this isn't you know i wouldn't be able to own this so you know maybe he's talking about that maybe he's not but again you kind of hear something like that and you kind of put it on the shelf to see uh, what would happen and he said other things as well during that prophecy uh, uh as well well uh this april right around the time my son was born just a lot going on um the organization reached out to us and they asked if um we would be willing to uh, go into, uh, you know, solidify the agreement, in essence, uh, submit an LOI. And uh, in that moment, I heard, I truly heard and, and sensed Holy Spirit say, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, this is not for you. And in fact, he kind of revealed to me that I was going to it, not because it was God's best, <laughs> but it was just available. And uh, he said, you wouldn't pick a wife like that, so <laughs> don't pick a building like that as well. And uh, it was tough. It was tough um, because as a pastor, you want to show progress to your church. Uh, mobile is hard on your volunteers, which we're a primary volunteer-based ministry. And it's been four years, been through a pandemic. I wanted something permanent, but I sensed God saying, let that go. Uh, even with new construction and continue to stay where we are. We, we have a great situation right now in the heart of the city, right off of the Beltline, um, great access, great visibility right off the freeway. So um, we're not in a bad place. And so I, I, I reached out to that organization. I told them, I know this is a great opportunity, but I'm going to turn it down. And, and the, uh, the gentleman, the owner, the CEO said, well, what's, what's going on? Is there something we can do? Can we lower the price? Can we? And I just said, I got to walk away. He said, is there something that's going on? He said, no. He said, Vinny, be honest with me. What's happening? I said, I just don't have peace. And I hung up the phone and I was shaking and I felt like a failure because I'm back at square zero when we were close to having a, a permanent space with brand new construction. Um, and so that I, I officially uh, walked away from that deal in May of uh, this year, so a couple months ago. 
So now going back to the prophecy that uh, Dr. Mike Maiden said, I just held on to it. Um, I wish I could say I had it, you know, completely transcribed. It was in my wife's prayer journal. <laughs> and uh, two weeks ago, literally two weeks ago today, um, and I'm going to give you guys the, the details that I can share because um, a lot of things are being finalized. Literally, once I get off this call, I'll be back in, in meetings, uh, finalizing everything I'm about to share with you all. But um, two weeks ago, I received a call from a pastor who, or really a text said, is this still Vince Thomas's number? And I'm like, depends on who's asking, you know, because <laughs> don't know. And uh, I noted, I saw who it was uh, through Apple kind of showed me like his, uh, his picture. And I said, oh, I know who this is. Let me reach back out and follow up. And uh, this gentleman reached out and said, hey, um, here's the situation. He just described the situation of the ministry where he was at. And so I went into my consulting brain to see like, okay, so how can I be of assistance, you know, to you all, how can I help? But at the end of his description uh, with this large established church here in our city, uh, he said, uh, myself, as well as our board, believe that we're to submit our ministry to your ministry. I said, oh, um, okay. Um, and it was Thursday night and, uh, you know, Sabbath was Friday. So I was like, I'm not going to work and violate Sabbath. So I said, hey, look, let's not let any sand get under our feet. Uh, next time I can meet is Saturday morning. So that was you know, almost two weeks ago this upcoming Saturday, I said, let's meet. And he said, and I'll invite you to the uh, facility and just kind of tour you around it so that you get an idea uh, and a visual of what I'm, I'm sharing. And uh, on that Saturday, we, we went to the facility and um, everything that you could dream of. I mean, it's an older facility. And, you know, right before I unmuted, that was a uh, uh, contractor for the roof. <laughs> Um, you know, just trying to coordinate some things, but um, uh, it's an older facility, but a, a very well built facility um, in a prime location here in our city. And um, he was just showing us what they did for the community and what they're doing for the community. Um, showed us the multi ethnic um, aspect of the ministry, where you know it's a primarily uh, Caucasian church, um, but yet they have uh, Asian churches that actually meet at the same space. Um, there's African American leadership. Uh, there was karate going on. There's a fitness center. There's nonprofits going on. There's a space in the church that's dedicated to launching uh, churches and helping them get um, started on the right foot and uh, assisting them with, with growing. And uh, there's a preschool and the, there's a clothing closet, there's a food pantry, you name it. It's, 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 it's just absolutely massive. And so now as he's walking us through the facility, um, I'm thinking, okay, you just want our church to kind of be another one of the organizations that are apart from this. And so, uh, we get done with the tour of the facility, and uh, prior to going, one of my uh, board members said, all right, Vince, look, if they're saying what they're saying, I need you to have a poker face. I need you to show no emotion. Uh, you know, just don't show that you're too interested. Don't show that you're not interested. Just keep a steady face. And I said, got it, because we want to make sure we negotiate properly. And um, at the end of the tour, I just said, okay, so I said, we see all this. What are you asking our church's outlet? I said, what are you asking of the outlet? And the pastor reiterated, we believe that God is asking us to submit this entire ministry under you all. Now, my wife starts crying and I'm like, honey, you're messing up our gangster right now. This is like, well, we have no room to negotiate because you're just breaking down in tears. And, you know, I'm trying to <laughs> you know, fight back emotion and, and everything that's going on. And so um, from there, just to kind of give a uh, real high level and, and uh, after everything is officially signed off, uh, right now our attorneys are going back and forth with their attorneys to make sure everything we verbally agreed to shows up uh, within the contract. But uh, we're a four-year-old ministry and um, uh, upon execution of this deal, this is a cash deal. Uh, no debt uh, whatsoever for any of this. Um, they are going to be turning over the property for pennies on the dollar because they say it's not about the money. It's about doing the mission 
and continuing the legacy that has begun uh, in our community. And we have observed your church and you all have uh, been about serving your community. And so because you all have been that way, we have full confidence in your leadership. We have full confidence in your vision. And we believe that um, you, you are the one to lead us forward. And so uh, in the next you know, 30 to 60 days, I'll be able to announce that, you know, first and foremost, our, our mobile church has a, has a home. Uh, be able to announce that in, in times such as these, uh, it is truly debt free. Um, the land, the building, everything is free and clear, no debt whatsoever. Um, and I get to say that we are going to continue being who we are and serving uh, the community. And so um, yeah, we're in a season right now where I've got a testimony so good I can't share it yet. But um, I, I want to make a testament to the, um, the words that go forth on these tables here in the U.S. Cal tables. Uh, when I went back and read the prophecy after the meeting, I couldn't help but break down and cry because every word that God has spoken uh, is true. And I will also share this. So I didn't violate you know, the day that I set apart is my off day to, to you know, pursue this interest and this lead. But um, when we actually got the phone call, our, I instructed our church to take a church-wide Sabbath. So when our church was resting, that's when God did his best work. Um, our church is four years old, and I've not used a realtor one time in uh, securing space for our church. And we have had nothing but prime real estate. In fact, we went to a broker early on to you know, try to do whatever, what you know to do as it relates to, to setting your church up. And the broker asked us a few questions and he said, you all have the best situation in the city. So why would you need me to help you get what you already have? And so he's just kept doing that um, in our current facility that we're in, which is a phenomenal facility. Um, and again, we're, we're pennies on the dollar there. And now, um, you know, uh, finalizing a deal for a permanent home, uh, which is considered the gateway to the community uh, because of its location still off of a major freeway here in Atlanta. And for those of you in New York, you all understand what real estate is like. And so I know what's in my church bank account. I know my intellect. I know my skills. I know my connections. And none of them put us in the position <laughs> that we're in right now. None of them. I, I'm telling y'all, I'm, I'm talking to you all, you know, as, as family right now. Uh, because, you know, when you all see pictures and everything, it's going to make it look like my church has a whole lot more resources than we do. But I'm going to tell you, it's the same God. And I, I'll be honest with you all. I started this church as a scratch plant without any denominational or church backing, but just simply based off of obedience from God. He told me to go to a particular area. I took them literal and we met outside. My opening bank balance for my church was $2,917 with $444 in savings. That's what we began with and just trusted God every step of the way. And he has taken little and turned it into much. Um, I, I, I could just go on and on um, about the faithfulness of God, but um, that's, that's where we are today. And, and I'm witnessing uh, a true miracle uh, in our midst. We pinch ourselves uh, you know, when I told my wife, like, hey, I'm going to, after this call, I'm going to have to go into the office. And she says, which one? Because uh, they, you know, have already given us the keys to the facility. Um, I, I, oh, God, it's just so good. So um, I just wanted to share that with uh, CCC. And I, I'll be back once all the details are finalized, because I don't want to jeopardize any of our negotiations right now. So I just need this to be a secret between us and uh <laughs> and that's it because i've got some outstanding attorneys working on this and uh they cut the price 
just because of the agreement and because of what they're asking our attorney cut the price by 70% just because of what they were requesting of us to do for them. So um, even at 100%, we could have afforded it easily, but she cut the price by 70% of what they were asking and there was no budge whatsoever. So um, uh, y'all look, I can't tell you, listen. I can't, I, I can't tell you, I can just show you that, that God is good and he's true to his word. Wow. So is uh, this also a church merger where they have a church and they're coming under you guys? Yeah. So it's a church merger, which, which for me, you know, um, I really wanted to go in with an open mind, open heart and understand where they were and what I, what I, um, committed to over the last week or so after I really had a chance to interview their staff and uh, sit down with each of them. Um, what we're able to do is for their staff, um, they are going to keep their, their jobs. We are not laying anyone off. Um, the, the beauty in this is that their staff compliments my staff. Uh, we keep a very lean operation and we only have what we needed. And because of their campus, they have other um, staff needs uh, that they had to operate. Um, and, and, and I'll say this, the, the pastor who initiated this, I'm keeping him on board as well. He will end up being my executive pastor um, because anyone who is willing to reach out to another pastor who could potentially fire them and remove them, but is willing to do it for the sake of the kingdom and the ministry and the area at large. You don't find that heart everywhere. On top of that, he took over the church in the thick of the pandemic and salvaged what was left and created uh, external revenue streams that pay for the operations of the church. So the tithes and offering do not pay for um, payroll. It does not pay for any of the operating costs associated with the building. That, that gentleman did that. And so I looked at him first day, I said, number one, that's job security. Um, I, I'm not letting anybody go that can think of that in the middle of a pandemic and to make it to where you're not dependent on tithes and offering. Um, another thing that that, you know, uh, just touched my heart is he was the pastor, but he knew that God had a pastor for that particular church. So he didn't move in his items to the quote unquote pastor's office, which is probably one of the larger offices in the church. And um, just this week, I just felt uh, the Lord tell me that, no, that's going to be your office as well. Uh, um because I'll, I'll just, you know, we, I, number one, his office is right by the front door. It's an old school church. I'm not trying to be by nobody's front door. You're not going to knock on my door. No. So I'm going to let him stay by the front door, but have the pastor's office. But to the staff, to the board of trustees, to the church, um, those in-kind gestures um, went a long way. We offered a seat on our board to one of uh, to their, their chairman of their particular board, they declined. But again, just offering to be transparent, open, accountable uh, as we make this transition of uh, resources and assets uh, coming over to uh, the Outlet Community Church. Um, wow. once, once everything is signed, our church valuation will go into the deck of millions wow. um, as a result of this deal. So uh, as we wrap this up, can you pray for all of us? Because we, many of us have been struggling during the pandemic and you have a lot of faith operating right now of the favor of God, there's favor all over you. So just, just release prayer and faith over us right now. Okay. Hey Amen. I'm going to be honest. I'd be doubting. I'd be, I, I, I'm nervous. I don't, I don't know half the time. <laughs> I just trust, and and that's that's all I can give you is if God has pulled you out of some dark times before, He is not changing whatsoever. But you have to be open to what He wants to do. And just last night, I I was looking at an older church that I was a part of at one time, and they they 
caught a wave of the spirit of God in the 90s. And that wave put them on the, the global and national uh, uh, spotlight. But the problem is they're going back to where they caught that wave and it's 2022 and that wave has moved on. And so uh, I didn't know why the Lord gave me this word, but I'll share it with you as I pray. Don't look for the wave you used to ride. Look for the wave that God is doing right now and it looks different. And so be open to the wave and his flow and his movement and be humble enough to just say, God, here I am with empty hands and a clean heart. And, you know, this is your church, not my church. This is your church. So let your will be done. So Heavenly Father, I pray for every single person uh, that is on here. It is not easy to pastor in the thick of a pandemic, in the thick of a political divide, in the thick of wokeness and cancel culture, and in the thick of just recession and the thick of inflation, but your word says we're sin abounds. Grace does much more abound, but you say it's to the humble that we receive grace. And so today we all come today and say, Lord, uh, we came here with nothing, but only what you've given us. So I'm asking for a new, a fresh anointing on every single person that's a part of this call, new insight, new understanding, Father, give them innovative ideas. Father, allow them to have the grace to act on the dreams in which you've given them. I bind any negative self-talk that talks them out of what you've asked them to do. Lord, may we have the humility of a child that even though it might look crazy what you're asking, we're gonna take that step. We're not gonna try to figure out the entire plan. We're not gonna try to figure out how it's gonna happen. We're just going to go, we're going to obey what you say to do next, Lord. And so for every person that's here, as they have a ministry, as they have a calling, as long as they have breath in their body, that calling and that ministry is not going anywhere. So release a flood of resources, provision, insight, and direction. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wow, that was powerful. Um, 